I want to hear from Jen Santanello about her daughter, about her missing daughter. This is another case from Tennessee. This is another case that we've covered. This is another case that's near and dear to my heart. Um, this is another case that's near and dear to the Bullhorn Betty channel. And um, I really want to make sure that everybody remembers this case. We don't want to leave anybody behind. Not Sebastian, not Summer Wells, not Layla, and not Holland Snap because she really needs some answers and people need to hear her story and her story still needs to be shared. Uh, her daughter's been missing for a significant number of days. We're coming up to a year. June 27th will be a full year since Layla disappeared. From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty Crime Stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work, we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support, and more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims' stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you, God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. Hey guys, Bullhorn Buddy! It's nice to see you all here today. So, Pascal, I like Pascal. I like his commentary, at least on a few cases that I've seen him cover here recently. You know, the Sebastian Rogers case. I really, I've heard his name, but I never really watched him until the Sebastian Rogers case. One of the cases that I have covered extensively is Layla Santanello. Layla Santanello was a 20 year old that disappeared uh, from uh, Kingsport area, Kingsport, Tennessee area, June 27th. And I know you guys are familiar with Chronicles of Olivia here on TikTok. Um, she's a beloved friend that I have collaborated with on a lot of cases. This is one of those cases that I collaborated with um, Chronicles of Olivia on. And it's a sad case. We found some, you know, very disturbing information while we were out there. But, you know, when we were out there and we were searching, one of the good things that I can say, one of the positive benefits we brought to at least Jen, is we were able to find somebody that had some information for Jennifer in those earlier days when she was just trying to get answers um, about her daughter and she was hearing a lot of stories from a lot of different people, we were able to at least find somebody that could fill some of those holes for her. But we did work very hard trying to find any information related Hey Beach, uh, related to Layla Santanello, and there was just nothing. The problem with this case is they're literally <clears throat> like an hour from three different states. So literally, Layla could be anywhere. And she did run away. She, her last, her last day, the 26th, June 26th, people talked about a very frightened Layla. She appeared to be scared and frightened. She ran away. One of the witnesses told us that she was, she turned around and ran away so much. Like she was just terrified. They were trying to help her and she turned around and ran and fell. Like she was, something was something, you know, it's just, 
it's worrisome because you hear a story like that and then the next day nobody ever hears from her again. You know what I'm saying? Okay, who all watched Pascal? The interview with Jennifer Santanello. Uh, the Jennifer Santanello interview about her daughter right here, Layla Santanello, was really, really good. It was informative. Let me get out of the way. Sorry, let me turn this ever so slightly. There we go. Hopefully we, we got it now. So Jennifer Santanello, the mother of Layla Santanello, was on Pascal's show today giving um, a very captivating uh, interview with him, uh, describing where she, you know, what's going on in the case, what information is factual information, where's the case going. She talked about Layla's boyfriend, Mike Thompson. Um, she really kind of brought her case home. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is she um, has been trying to appeal uh, to national media attention to kind of take her case and, and help get it more national attention. And so one of the ways we can help Layla's mom get national attention is by talking about the case, making it a case that we want to learn a little more about. If you don't know about Layla Santanello, Layla Santanello has been mi missing for almost a year. Uh, when she first went missing, one of her mother's friends or somebody she was communicating that lives in Kingsport, Tennessee, had reached out to me early on in this case. This case, um, it was about two or three weeks old. It was getting literally no attention. I think there was one little blurb in their local uh, paper. So Chronicles of Olivia and I decided to um, collaborate on this. And we rolled into town. I really didn't want to because we had a lot of stuff going on behind, well, in front of the scenes with some other channels that weren't being very kind and, and things of that nature that we were dealing with. And we didn't want to bring that drama to the case, which, you know, nobody was helping her. So we didn't want not to help her. So we had a choice and we chose that, you know, we were going to help a mom in need. And it did bring... Uh, quite a bit of drama as most of the uh, stuff that I get into does because you know there's just hateful people out there um, for whatever reason that like to attack me and are willing to attack innocent families in an effort to um, you know do that so we went out there but listen to this guys her story went viral uh, Chronicles of Olivia and I when we went out there and searched the beautiful people here on TikTok let her name and her face be known literally around the world. And it gave a lot of um, wind in the sails to help bring and propel this case forward, which it did. Uh, but Layla's still missing. And the, you know, we need to kind of keep that wind going and those, those sails. We don't want to leave this, this loving mother behind. There is a history of drug addiction in here, and I really do uh, hope that people understand um, one of the reasons why I chose to take this case and, and work with it is because of the history of this case, because I knew that mainstream media, because of the history, wouldn't give this case a fighting chance. And I wanted to know, as well as her mom, what happened to her. They talked in this interview about the missing phone, like everybody wanted to know why Layla didn't have her phone and, and uh, Jen explains how Michael was arrested previously and they confiscated the phone that he had, which he had Layla's phone and despite um, best efforts, it's in evidence and they're not getting it back. So they tried as much as they could to get it and they couldn't. Um, they talked to everyone. This is one of the things that I thought was pretty interesting. They talked to everyone that was in contact with Layla from that Tuesday to that Friday or from that Friday to that Tuesday. I can't remember the time or I, I, I didn't write it down. So I apologize about that. But I remember Tuesday and Friday. And <clears throat> that was pretty interesting. Thank you, Munchie. Um, that was pretty interesting because one of the other statements, as many people know, a lot of people um, including myself, although I kept it to myself because we didn't have enough information to come out and say it. I had always thought that Michael Thompson had a hand in this or knew something. And I know you guys have never really ever heard me say that. Again, it's because even though we went out there to find out information and to get information, we didn't find really a whole lot that really led us um, one way or another other than people knew what happened and um, 
you know, it sounded like something bad may have happened to her. That was the information we were getting. Now it's been a significant amount of time. There's always hope left as like uh, Jennifer Santanella had said, you know, she has a lot of hope. She is constantly getting leads herself with people sending fit photos of who they think might be her daughter. There is a possibility her daughter is out there walking. We don't know what happened to her. And that's the truth. Uh, we have no clue what happened to her. Uh, she was there one minute and literally gone the next. Could she have gotten in the car and, and went to another state and got out and just, you know, hasn't even seen that her, her entire family's looking for? Is there a possibility of that? Yeah. In this case, there's absolutely that possibility. Not just, it's over, over a possibility. It's a probability. It could have happened. It could still be. I mean, we literally have nothing. We don't have really, we have no crime scene. We have, um, we have people that saw her come out of the woods, so we did see her run away, but somebody has put eyes on her since, you know? So at this point, there is a good possibility she just walked off, met another, you know, person in the same boat, got in a car, drove off and said, you know, F this place. It's hard to believe because she hasn't called home. She always kept in contact with her mom. She always kept in contact with her dad. Um, she visited her daughter when she could. She hasn't been on social media. These are telltale signs, okay? These are telltale signs that something's not right, okay? But again, we don't know. And the last lead that we had that gave us a little hope of, of guiding us in a direction was the marble slab. And that ended up being another woman. I, I didn't hear um, Jen touch on that because the marble slab was a lot to do at the beginning. But we hear that that was literally a different woman altogether in black pants, a tank top, and no shoes. Crazy. It's crazy. Um, Jen last spoke to Layla on June 25th. If you guys remember, June 26th is when Layla left the AmeriCorps Hotel and was seen um, running into the woods. I'm glad. This is one thing that I'm really happy to hear. I'm happy to hear that Jen now has a good understanding of what happened at the AmeriCorps Hotel that sent her daughter running to the woods. She does have a lot of of now a lot of information that was always unclear to us. We didn't know if it was because law enforcement was there, if she was terrified because of somebody else. But now we learned that it was because she got lost. She was in a room. She was really kind of out of it. Um, she, like she had no purse, no nothing because she couldn't find the room she was in. And there was, she had been uh, banging on doors and apparently one of the staff had come out and talked to her. So she was just trying to hunker down and not be noticed. And then all of a sudden law enforcement pulls into the AmeriCorps and it kind of bugs her out. So her mom actually believes that she might have been on a different type of substance than, the, than her normal customary substance of, you know, the really nasty stuff, the poison poison, the stuff that comes over the border, you know, I mean, all of it pretty much comes over the border, but you know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> Monday, she couldn't remember what room she was in. She was knocking on doors. She was hiding. Police came through. She ran through a patch of woods next to the mayor court on the 27th. She's seen leaving those woods and the witness that we uh, did see and spoke to Chronicles of Olivia and I that she was trying to bum the cigarette is legit. And of course she has history of, um, you know, some type of addiction. So it's a really sad story, but she had just gotten it. My understanding, she had just gotten into this addiction. I personally remember mine. Mine didn't really last very long either. And mine wasn't on the substances she was on. Um, it was a much different time back whenever I was, um, had my own struggles. There's a whole different, um, a whole different market than there was when I was growing up. And I'm personally thankful for that because I think that had this market been when I was having all of my problems, I don't know if I would have survived. And, um, it's because of the type of substances that they're now using. 
So it's just very, very hard, but it sounds like this was not something that was had, had been um, happening for a significant amount of time. I can tell you my person, it took me from, from front to beginning. I almost, I was almost deceased by, within six months. So it's, um, I can only imagine ha- what the spiraling effect of what Jennifer had to witness with Layla had to have been like. It, it, it couldn't have been pretty. I can tell you that I still see some of the pain on my family's face that I caused back in back in my days, you know? And even though I've, I haven't had those problems in, in a significant amount of time. And, you know, it, it is still is a struggle to this day. I mean, don't think that there's there's not a struggle that, that, that I don't have. I mean, I do. There's some days that I have to just completely shut down, you know, because things are just getting too much. They're too much to take. You know, it could be anything that triggers something. And so it, it, I can't, and that's after all these years, you know, that's after all these years. And so to hear, you know, her, I remember that, you know, you, I remember not real, not even thinking you really, you, you, you still think that you're in control at that point, you know, and you're just not. Um, so I feel for her, you know, I felt for her mom. The reason why I kind of gravitated to her case is because I saw my mom in Jennifer Santanello. You know, I saw my mom because there was a time, you know, there was a time. And so that's why I chose to help this family. I'm, you know, we need to start talking about it again. Layla is still out there somewhere. So I think right now we're going to be starting to try to couple uh, Layla's case with Sebastian Rogers case because those are two um, cases in Kingsport and in the Tennessee area that we can cover along with Summer Wells. You know, Summer Wells is another case that has been near and dear to my heart personally. I have my opinions in that case as well. And that was from extensive and exhaustive uh, work out there in Hawkins County, Tennessee. And when I say extensive and exhaustive, um, I can tell you that almost, I was out there almost a month, um, every month for almost a year, you know, for at least several days almost every month out of a year we were in in Tennessee and that was back in 2021 beginning of 2022 up until uh the first year the first milestone of Summer Wells and um that was a little rough so we're about to creep up to Layla Santanello's one-year milestone and Summer Wells three-year milestone all in in Tennessee so we have our work cut out for us I don't know if we're ever going to see Summer Wells. I really don't. I'm just praying to God that what I'm hearing, you know, behind the scenes is truly transpiring, you know, unknown to us. And what I've been hearing behind the scenes for those that are curious is I've been hearing that Hawkins County no longer has the case. I've been hearing that TBI has the case. And I've been hearing that there is something going on behind the scenes. What that is, I have no idea. I don't know if that's even accurate or true because, you know, there's so many people that troll these cases on a given day that I really just don't know. So that's all I have, folks. I hope you guys take care. I want you to have a great day. TGIF. Oh, and by the way, if you guys want to know what I'm doing today. I don't know if you guys know, I I haven't cooked since I've been kind of by myself. I really haven't cooked very much. And so every now and again, I just want something, you know? And so this is my broccoli chicken casserole (laughs) that I'm making and it was just put into the oven. And so I am like dying. This is my my new thing, I don't know if you told, I'm, I'm trying to clean it out. My little Goodwill thing. I went to Goodwill yesterday and that's my latte machine right behind it. Do you see that? The little price tag right there, $24.99. I checked it out. It needs to be cleaned. I'm in the process of cleaning it right now. And uh, $24.99. And it works. It works. It works. But just, uh, just, uh, just salivate over that, my broccoli chicken casserole. I'll let you guys, I'll let you all know how it, how it turned out and how it tasted. Okay. 
But don't forget, Layla Santanello, get over to Pascal's. Listen to the interview. It was, it, to be honest with you, I haven't talked to Jen in a really long time. So it was great getting a good update on this case. And uh, she did an amazing job. She did an amazing job. And she's just a mother trying to do her best to find answers to her missing and for her missing daughter. So we'll talk to you soon. God bless everybody. Rock it out with your coffee beans out. And we'll see you soon.